Once upon a time. It's how all classic Disney stories go. Our heroes face a problem, take down the villains, and maybe find love. But when we look past the villains and evil monsters, you might also notice that a lot of the main characters' mothers are dead. Bambi, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, Snow White, Pocahontas, Finding Nemo, Aladdin, the list goes on and on, and it extends beyond just Disney. Of course there are outliers, but this is definitely a trend, and we want to know why. If you haven't noticed this before, you probably will now. So why kill off the mothers? Turns out, the answer is deep within our psyche. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get answers to questions just like this one. Tale as old as time. Mom dies in the beginning, the protagonist carries on with the dad, faces a problem, thrives, survives, and lives happily ever after. Longtime Disney producer Don Hahn revealed his theories in an interview with Glamour. His first theory is a more practical one. Animated films are typically 90 minutes, and we need the action to begin almost immediately. The main character needs to accept responsibility and grow as soon as possible in the story. It's much easier to force your characters to grow when you bump off the parents. His words, not mine. The death of a parent would inherently make the child more resourceful and independent, creating a more colorful and relatable main character for the audience. Makes sense, but that still doesn't answer the question of why always the mother? Han's second theory believes the story tradition lies within Walt Disney himself. After the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in 1937, Walt bought a house in North Hollywood for his mom and dad to move into. But the furnace was broken. So he had some studio guys, not specialists, come over to fix the furnace. Then when his parents moved in, the furnace leaked and his mother got ill from it and passed away. Walt took complete responsibility for the death because he was the one that pushed his parents to move into the house in the first place. It's theorized that Walt, haunted by the death of his mother, excluded mothers from films that followed. But Han's theory ignores the fact that Snow White was released a year before this happened and Snow's mother died during childbirth. So Sarah Boxer from The Atlantic has a few other theories. The first being that it is simply a traditional plot device. The Dead Mother plot dates back far before Walt Disney's Snow White and even the literary tales of The Little Mermaid and Cinderella. In fact, one of the first uses of this plot was from 9th century China with the telling of Ye Xin. Why was it a traditional plot device in the first place? Her second theory, much like Don Hahn's, expands on it by saying that when the mother dies, the character development begins. The plot and personality of that character depends on that death. And others support Boxer's theory. Carolyn Dever, an English professor, wrote that character development begins in the space of the missing mother. And child psychologist Bruno Bettelheim agrees. Society still carries the notion that the mom is a primary parent and that the dad is the secondary parent, since the mother is the one who carries. So, when the mother dies, it tugs on the heartstrings of the viewer. And perhaps if it was the father that was always passing away instead of the mother, it would hit too close to home for a lot of society, since 23% of families have single mothers, while only four have single fathers. The death of the mother also allows us as the audience to dislike or hold a grudge against the villains and stepmothers of the stories that, in many cases, killed the mother in the first place. Take Bambi, for example. We see the relationship between Bambi and his mother grow in the beginning. Then, she was shot tragically by hunters at the end of the first act. This simultaneously established the villain, the hunters, while catapulting Bambi's character development. We are more attached to Bambi now than we might have been had his mother not been shot. Another theory that Bambi, along with many other culprits of the dead mother plot supports, is that the death of the mother means the rise of the heroic father. Sarah Boxer continues to point out that the dead mother is not always replaced by an evil stepmother, 
but by a good father. Bambi's father, the great prince, must step up and help carry the protagonist through to the resolution, where we as the audience feel rewarded by both of their journeys. This can also be seen clearly in Finding Nemo. Nemo's mother dies tragically at the hands of a barracuda, and so it's Nemo's father, Marlin, that has to race through the ocean to save Nemo. Boxer found that in a lot of the dead mother plot films, the father often starts out bad. In The Little Mermaid, her dad is a tyrant, and in Brother Bear, it was actually the father figure that killed the mother in the first place. But no matter how they start, they always end up good. And the last theory that many people find to be the most realistic is that a lot of these stories were developed in times in which a mother's death during childbirth was really common. The father would remarry, and if the new mother didn't get along with the child, then there of course would be a negative relationship. Sounds like Cinderella was less of a fairy tale and more of a common story. Except the talking mice, fairy godmother, and she becomes a princess in the end. No big deal. Of course this isn't the only dead parent plot that exists. There are cartoons that do kill off the father, and even more that kill off both parents. Take Tarzan, for example. Both of Tarzan's parents, the mom and the dad, are killed by a leopard. And there are some cartoons where the parents are alive and well. Take Mulan. She was able to run off and have her adventures, and her parents didn't need to die. Although her struggling father still gets to me. Perhaps anything can be a motif if you look hard enough. But there is a pattern worth noticing with all the dead mother plots. So the next time you sit down with your little one, or even by yourself to watch a Disney movie, take a look and start noticing what you find. You may find that there is just no mother. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell below, that way you're notified whenever we post a new video.